Check, check, check. Check, testing. One, two, three. Testing. One. There's a camera right there. Two, three. All right. Herman's here. Welcome, sir. Glad to have you. A couple other folks kind of dribbling in, dribbling in, dribble down your chin. Um, hold on. Got to get a little lemonade. Oh, goodness gracious. Excuse me. Well, I remember what movie was it? There was a movie about TV, a TV news team. I think it was Robert Redford and, and some other folks. And they, they always said, you know, remember to, to sit on your coattails. Well, I don't have coattails, but I do remember to pull my shirt. If, if, if you leave your shirt just kind of hanging like this, it gets all, all wrinkly. But if you'll pull it down in the back, that will take the wrinkles out on the front. Isn't that something? So just pull that shirt tail down and, and sit on it if it's not already tucked in, of course. I'm a not tucked guy. Um, and sometimes a little a little makeup, just a little little face powder right there will will make that shine go away. The older I get, the more I have to shine up there. Hello, John. Good afternoon. Welcome, sir. Sorry I've been so hard to get a hold of. But uh, I've been hard to get a hold of. Uh, yes. The pandemic is keeping us hopping. But um, I, th I think I sent you a link. If I didn't, I'll do it again to the uh, scheduling app so you can get on my schedule and I can get on yours. So there we go. There we go. What's it like in, in the Caribbean? Let's see. That's um, St. Saint, Saint Thomas. You know, my memory is just not what it used to be. Not that it was actually that good ever. Um I do want to give a shout out to um, anybody in the uh, vMix 101 class that started yesterday. Um, had a great class. It's going to be a lot of fun. Really sharp people in that class and asking good questions. That's, that's how you can tell they're sharp because they're, they're asking good questions. And, and I like especially the bold ones that are not afraid to ask, or they may be afraid, but they do it anyway. They're not afraid to ask a stupid question, you know, one that everybody should know the answer to. But I'll bet you half the time, at least 100% of the time, 50% of the folks <laughs> don't know the answer to that question. St. Croix, and it's warm with a little rain. Oh, my gosh. Warm for them is probably, you know, 95. Holy cow. Warm for us is, well, these days, warm for us would be 70. 65 might be warm. Depends on where you are as to what warm is. Herman is down in Lake Wales, where it's probably, eh, it's probably not as, as warm as St. Croix, but still, it's getting there. It's 85 degrees today. Holy cow. Holy cow. That's Fahrenheit. Yeah. Fahrenheit. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, if you're thinking about, if, if you're watching this live or after the fact and you're thinking, oh, oh man, I missed the vMix 101 class. Well, the very first week of the class, the class started yesterday. The first week of the class, we always do two classes. We repeat the first class again. So if you feel like you've missed the class and you still want to take it, we'll give the first lesson again tomorrow. So it's not too late to go to the class. You can go to easternshorebroadcasting.com, click the store. I think it's the store tab, and then go to classes, and you can get more information there. Herman says it is awesome there now. Yeah, don't rub it in. Don't rub it in. Although... Um, Sandy and I are going to take a road trip here in a couple of weeks and go down to the Tampa, Florida area, St. Pete, and um, hang out for a little while and for part of that time do some babysitting of our grandchildren. But um, we'll be doing the, v the uh, Streaming Idiot show from down there. We'll be doing the uh, VMix 101 class from down there, at least one of them. So it's going to be a lot of fun. 82 degrees in Lake Wales. Oh my gosh. That's not even, that's not even fair. Although, you know, summertime, I don't know about St. Croix, um, because you get those nice, um, uh, Gulf breezes, 
But Lake Wales, if you guys are landlocked, you know, you're just broiling in the summer. Just broiling. For a... Anyway. So, um, how are we doing on time? We've got a few minutes left. A few minutes left. So, yeah. So, the VMix 101 class is a good one. And it's going to be a great class. And I'm, and I'm already enjoying the folks in the class. That's the, that's the payoff for me, is to, to be able to make some friends and have some great conversations and then you know, have relationships on into the future where, you know, somebody can call and say, Tom, I got a question and I know where they are. I know, I know what they're working on. Um, what's John saying? Can hope on spirit, um, can hope on spirit for Chep to, oh, for, for a trip to St. Croix. Oh boy, that would be the bomb. Dave Edwards says it's 48 degrees in the desert. Well, Dave, come out of the desert. Come to the promised land. <laughs> you can, can hope, can hop. Well, I would love to come visit St. Croix, and I would do it in a heartbeat. When, when, you know, when things start opening back up again, assuming that ever happens, I guess it will, and we can, we can fly around and do stuff like that. That would be a, a bomb. We could, we could, John, we could do a Streaming Idiots episode from St. Croix. Hey, now, 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 there was a good one. And we could write the whole trip off. <laughs> that would be great. That would be great. I love, I love the Caribbean. My, uh, I know it, sometimes folks in the Caribbean don't consider the Bahamas part of the Caribbean, but, but my dad was actually born in Nassau, um, came to the U.S. when he was five. So he was a naturalized citizen. And so I am the son of an immigrant. There you go. And I think I hear the garbage truck. Can you hear the garbage truck? Yep, right there by the big highway. So um, today we're going to be talking about the uh, Bird Dog P100. So if you've got one or are thinking about getting one, you want to pay attention because we're talking about the, the firmware update. It's a little, it's a little unusual. It's a three-step process, three distinct steps. And so I'm going to go through them. And they're not difficult, but you just, you just, you know, you got to play by the rules and do them. Hello, Daniel. 25 degrees Fahrenheit and a light coat of snow over there in southern Sweden. 25 degrees. 25 degrees. Well, it's nighttime, nighttime there. So the sun's gone down. That's part of it. Hello, Martin. Welcome, Steedy Cam. Glad you are here. Glad you're here. And um, yes, yeah, Southern Sweden. You win the award so far, Daniel, for the coldest and snowiest place. Yep. Let's see. Um, Martin is in uh, England, in Great Britain, where the temperature is probably close to what Dave's got. Yep. Martin, Dave said that it's uh, 60, no, what did he say? 48 degrees Fahrenheit in the desert. So that's like centigrade, I don't know. 18, 22, something like that. No, it couldn't be 22. That would be too high. I don't know my conversions. I'll have to work on that. I'll have to work on that. John says the PTZ Optics firmware update was interesting. Yes. Yeah, but I think I think that's a that's really a breeze. That's much easier to do than the bird dog. It's just because the bird dog, it's different for each camera. With the PTZ Optics cameras, <laughs> the firmware updates pretty much the same for all of them. Um, but I think the difference is that PTZ Optics probably has a tighter integration inside the camera between the, the feature set and the, ca and the camera mechanicals, you know, the, 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 the camera guts, the sensor stuff. Um, and I think with the bird dog, they're trying to do more on the feature set. So that's why they, it's, they're not so tightly. I mean, they're certainly they're tightly integrated. 48 degrees Fahrenheit is nine degrees Celsius. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. 
Uh, Dave Edwards says that according to according to Dave Edwards, vMix is in the final beta, and we are all to cross our fingers. <laughs> And we are using the final beta right now, version 24.0.0.42. And that's real. That's really interesting. The 42, we're going to start the show here in just a second. Hang out. I know the, the little indicator just turned green, which means the show is supposed to start. But, but dot .42 means that this is an extremely mature beta. I mean, you look at all the other betas, and I don't know if you can actually go back and check, but my recollection is the other betas from vMix, by the time they were released to the public, were in the, in the late teens or early 20s. Um, and then when, when, the, when, it went, when it went public, you know, it might have been in the, the late teens or early 30s. Here we've got one that's in the early 40s, dot 42. Um, which means that it's it's gone through it's gone through 42 different versions to get to this point. Most of them were not uh, were not public. Occasionally, you'll see vMix um, jump from you know, for example, right now, um, the current official release is 23.0.0.67, but I think at one point it jumped from .60 to .62 or .63, which meant that there were some internal things that were going on. And they released a version internally, and then they said, "Whoops, you know, we need to go back." And they wanted to have, you know, all their records straight as to when different things were done. So they added another number to it. By the time we got it, it wasn't dot six one; it was dot six two. Um, but we are at dot four two on the beta, and you can get the beta if you want to. Just go to forums. That's plural forums.vmix.com. and go ahead and sign up for the forums. Register for the forums while you're there, and go into the general discussion forum and in the general discussion forum the very first thread is about um, the vmix 4 excuse me vmix 24 preview is what they call it right then and you can go to the very first post post number one that where martin sinclair is announcing the release of the beta and there's a link right there and you can use that link because that's the same link he uses the same link regardless of which version of the beta it was so you can scroll to the last page, which I think is like page eight or something like that, and see, you know, the, the official dot forty two release, and that URL will be the same URL as it is in the very first post uh, back on page one. So there you go. All right. Martin says it's thirty seven degrees where he is today. And 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 I'm sure it's wet. It, it's always wet. Holy cow. Three degrees centigrade. Is it centigrade or Celsius? For those of us that don't use that, we don't pay much attention. For Martin, <laughs> for Martin, it's shorts and t-shirt weather. It's always shorts and t-shirt weather for Martin. I love it. I, I had a friend here. Uh, he died several years ago. Uh, Harold, who wore shorts regardless of the weather. Shorts regardless of the weather. Just... Uh, a man's a man's man. All right. Well, let's get this show on the road, shall we? It's going to be a good one. Let's get one swig of lemonade. And let's turn the cell phone off. Oh, we have a message. It's from my brother. That's okay. That will wait. And... And we turn the sound down. Is it that hard to do it, Tom? You're making it out to be more difficult than it needs to be. There we go. All right. We got that down. We got our show notes for today. Ta-da! Nicely organized and ready to go. So shall we do this? Ah, Anders Celsius was a Swedish guy. So if he was Swedish, that makes him a Swede. Got it. Okay, not suede. That's something different altogether. All right. All right. Let's 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 see if we can get this show on the road. Sit tight. We'll be right back.
Ta-da! All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. It worked. Not that I wasn't expecting it to work, of course, but but it worked. It's always nice when it does. Hey, I'm Tom Sinclair, and you have arrived at Streaming Idiots. Streaming Idiots, yes. <laughs> the edge of the internet is right over there. You can see it from here. You've, you've been everywhere else. This is the last place you could possibly be. So glad to have you with us today. I want to give a shout out to anybody from our brand new VMix 101 class that started yesterday. If you're watching live or uh, on demand, um, I am delighted to have you as as part of the, as, I was going to say as part of the class, but as part, part of the audience today. Um, you're welcome if you're watching live to chime in in the, in the chat. Um, we always love to hear from folks. And I see Tim just joined us. Better late than not, than not at all, Tim. That's okay. But if you're thinking, golly, Tom, I wish I had joined the VMix 101 class, but it's already started. But, you know, the very first week that we start this class, there are always people that sign up for it that, you know, discover Tuesday night, oh, the first class was today. Doggone it. You know, I just didn't get in. You weren't in the habit yet. I get that. So the very first week of the VMix 101 classes, we repeat live the first class on Tuesday. We repeat it again on Thursday. So if you missed class yesterday, you can come tomorrow. And I've already sent you the Zoom link. And if you haven't gotten it, send me a note at, uh, well, that's the URL to the website. There's a con, uh, or that contains the URL to the website. There's a contact page there. Shoot me a note and tell me, Tom, I lost my Zoom credentials. Um, or if you'd like to sign up for the class, you can go to the website and, and, and that just takes you to easternshorebroadcasting.com if you happen to be watching on your phone and can't scan that on your phone at the same time. And there you can go to the store to our classes page and sign up for the class. It's $199.99, $199.95. Anyway, four cents. I'll, I'll give you four cents. But uh, it's a great class, six, six sessions each Tuesday, or in, in case you missed my announcement just a second ago, Thursday this week. But Tuesdays uh, for the next five weeks at three o'clock Eastern time runs about two hours. And we, we cover two or three lessons per session with questions and answers in between. And it's, it's a good little class and it's always nice. You know, you can watch a video and you can watch it five times. And you can go, I still don't get it. I need to ask Boom, whatever that question was, that little piece of information that everything else, that, that hinge pin, that linchpin, that everything else rested on, you miss that. And so with a live instructor, i.e. me, for what it's worth, <laughs> with a live instructor, you can ask questions. And in a Zoom format, you know, I'm sharing my screen a lot of times, so I'm not watching the class to see who's raising their hand. So I encourage folks, just interrupt me, just interrupt me. You know, if I lose my train of thought, I'll come back to it pretty quickly. But I'd rather you interrupt and let's get that linchpin in so that you can build the rest of the knowledge on top of it. It's a lot of fun. Great class. I think it's great. You can see on the class page on our website, um, I, I think Mike and, um, and Chuck, un, unsolicited, sent me some video um, testimonials about the class. So if you're just interested in hearing what other people think about it, just for the fun of it, you can go to, go to the VMIX, excuse me, go to the Eastern Shore Broadcasting page, easternshorebroadcasting.com, go to the store, go to the class, go to the VMIX 101 class and scroll down to the bottom. And there, the videos are down there. It's, uh, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention today, where are my notes? Oh, this just showed up on my radar and I didn't even have a chance to, to do a URL um, on a lower third or anything. But if you are interested in ISO recording NDI inputs or, or virtually anything that's available on your system with NDI, NDI it doesn't have to be a camera. Um, but if you're interested in ISO recording, there is a... Um, I guess it's an app or a little piece of software by a company called Live Mind, Live Mind, L I V E M I N D, LiveMind.tv. And for the princely sum of $77, you can get this app that will record up to 16 NDI inputs simultaneously and time sync them and, and all the other fancy stuff that has to happen. Um, there are some requirements on CPU and storage. 
but it's pretty CPU light, which of course the NDI recording processes in vMix are too. It records it in the native format, which is an MOV file. Um, anyway, you can get a free trial there and it runs on Windows, it runs on Mac, and it runs on Linux. I haven't tried it, but my friend Guillaume um, announced it. And if he, he announced it, I think it, in the vMix experts group on Facebook. And if he's uh, kind of announcing it means he kind of thinks it's worth worth having a look at. Um, so try the free trial and, and let me know what you think. You can leave it in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube. LiveMind.tv for um, NDI ISOs. Thought that might be interesting. Okay, so yeah. Oh golly, I'm, I'm distracted once again by the chat. And you guys are just, who was it one time? Oh, it was Marie that I had left my audio off. And she was sh shouting, all caps in the chat, audio, turn your audio on. And so Chester has, has posted um, one just now. It says, Mr. Sinclair, I've been with you for years and you've been most helpful. I have VidBlaster X. And what one have to do if we're not going to use Flash anymore? How do we broadcast? Chester, I'm so sorry. I don't know anything about VidBlaster X. I left VidBlaster um, as a reseller prior to VidBlaster X. Um, but my guess would be that uh, you could direct your, your question to Mike Versteeg, the developer at, uh, at VidBlaster uh, X in the VidBlaster X group on Facebook, VidBlaster X group on Facebook. So. There we go. But hang around and hear about vMix. Well, in this case, we're not talking about vMix, but we're using vMix. And uh, today our broadcast is coming to you in uh, beautiful 1080p, 60 frames a second. We're using our BirdDog P100 um, PTZ camera. It's also NDI and of course, HDMI and, and SDI and, and IP. And, and I think it does USB also for like, a, it emulates a webcam. Anyway, this, not that camera, but the one over here, <laughs> we're going to be updating the firmware. Um, so hang around and, and let's, uh, let's, let's take a, a lot. Um, oh, Martin says, and, and a hat tip to Martin, the, the jaws of death opening in the beginning was, was Martin's worth, Martin, Martin K. He says, I've had the, the LiveMind NDI recorder since November 2019 seems to work well for recording in native NDI format. Okay, so there's a, a recommendation coming from Martin. Um, you know, if he says it works kind of well, that means it works really well because he's really specific and particular about that kind of thing so far as video is concerned. And we, we are thankful that he is. The P100, the Bird Dog P100, that's the baby in the, in the Bird Dog line of, of, P, of video cameras, which are currently, I think, all PTZs, it is, um, has a 10x optical zoom and I think a 12x digital zoom. I wouldn't recommend digital zoom to anybody. Um, I, what was it? I had a, cam, a camera one time, it was a Canon, and it had a, I think, a 20x optical zoom or a 15x optical zoom or something like that, and then a 400x digital zoom. And by the time you zoomed into something on 400x, I mean, you, you got like two pixels. <laughs> it, was, it was not very useful, not very useful, but it was probably a good sales tool. Uh, 400x, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, we can get all the way across a mile away. Um, but the, the bird dog... Um, I'm not sure about this bird dog. I know the P200 uses a Sony sensor. I think this one uses a Sony sensor, but it's, it's kind of interesting. And, and I'm going to give you just some background first, and then we'll actually go in and, and, and do the camera. Um, here, here is what the camera looks like. This is actually a live shot of the camera today um, sitting on my desk. And uh, you can tell it's live because there's my hand. Anyway, this camera is uh, got different parts that have to be updated. Um, we've got the um, we've got the baseboard, and that's you know for those of you builders, this is not the piece of trim that runs around between the floor and the wall. 
<laughs> the baseboard is the part that handles the communication between the image sensor and the rest of the, the, rest of the camera. Um, it controls the white balance and the exposure. It controls the connection with the USB so far as the webcam is concerned. And it is the first part, the base, it is the first part of the firmware update is to update the baseboard. So we'll do that first. And the baseboard, um, as I recall, updates with um, a USB cable. So anyway, we'll go through the instructions on that one. The second part is the master control unit, the MCU, the MCU. And that's the part, I got to read my notes here, um, that receives and integrates the incoming commands like PTZ, pan, tilt, zoom, those kind of mechanical commands. Um, and, and the speed by which they happen and the smoothness by with which they happen, that's the master control unit. So that's the second part that gets updated. And I think that's just a, a over um, Ethernet update. And then the last part, of course, is the NDI. Um, anything that's been added to NDI in the NDI um, environment, and then any new features or changes to features that BirdDog wants to make in the camera. Um, and this would be like um, the controls on the web interface. And I'll show you the web interface, for example, and the NDI encoding, taking the video and encoding it for NDI and making it available. Um, a side note about BirdDog is they, they're a company that you need to be careful with. They, um, their products, they will release a product that is, is what it says it is, but then they will continue to unlock features as time goes on. So the product that you bought actually gets better and better. Um, and so I think right now we're on the, I don't know, maybe the 10th version of the firmware for this camera. It's been out for about a year. And they continue to, to polish up what's working well and improve things. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to cover some of those as we go through that today. So a word of caution, if you, if you buy a bird dog product, expect that you will, you, you, me, you <laughs> will have to take some initiative to try to stay up to date with these firmware updates as they come out so that you can take advantage of the new features. A great example is the very first product they brought to market, which is the bird dog studio. It's a box about yay big maybe about that thick, um, has SDI, HDMI. So it had SDI or HDMI inputs and it would come out NDI on the other side. And that's cool. And then they started enabling features like, well, maybe you can take HDMI and SDI at the same time and encode those as two separate feeds and send them out. And then maybe you can have them do not just encoding, but decoding. And so they began to unlock all these features in the camera. And they, I don't know that they were unlocking them so much as they were developing them. And there was a chip inside the camera that could, could handle all these changes with the firmware update. So that's what we're going to do to this camera today. So this is the Hello Dave. Welcome. And Ken, Ken, you're late. And Ron is here. Ron, you know, where's your watch, dude? Um, so let's see. Here is the camera and let's flip over to the, um, the bird dog interface. Let's, oh, dog on it. You know, I hate when I, when I don't pay attention here, I need to add an input that is a desktop capture input so that you guys can see what I'm doing, um, when the time comes. So this is, this is the web interface and let me sharpen that a little bit so that you can see it. Uh, sharpen is right there. That should make the text a little clearer. And basically I, I got to this by putting in the URL for the camera and I discovered the URL. There are two ways you can, well, there are a bunch of ways you can discover the URL. Um, but one kind of easy way to discover the URL is to go into the command prompt. And that's just a window I'm bringing in and I'm going to type in a R P dash a. I can always remember that because here in the U S there's something called the, the AARP, which is some old folks 
thing, not for, not for young people like us, but ARP space dash A, and that'll give us a list of all the devices that are connected to my network. Well, I know, for example, that dot 88 is the camera that I'm using for the show and 254 and 255 or, you know, who knows what they are, but they aren't anything on my network. And dot 80 right here is my PC. And that's all that's turned on right now. And so 137 must be this new camera. The other way you can check it is you can download a, a little piece of software um, called Bonjour Browser. Here's Bonjour Browser. And so we can um, refresh that screen. Here is the P100 that I'm using, dot .88. And here is my other camera, dot .37. So two different ways to discover what's on your network. And then you can go into the address and well, let's see if I went into this for the, let's see if I went into it for the first time. Let's just show what it looked like. So that's going to be 192 and there should be somewhere on this list. Nope. So we'll go to 137 and I'm already logged in. OK, well, never mind. And we can see here information about my IP address and about the current firmware version. Well, this camera is on firmware version 20 dot a bunch of stuff, and we're going to update it to version 21 dot a bunch of stuff. And if, if I was in 21, then obviously it would be an incremental update, but this is going to be a pretty, pretty major update for my camera. You can see it's set for 1080p 5994, just like the camera that we're using for this video. And this is the camera that we send out um, as demo. So if you've requested to, to borrow our P100 camera, then you're getting this little guy right here. And uh, you will get him with fresh firmware. So we've got our web interface set up. The other information that we need is to come from the Bird Dog website. So if we switch over to this is the Bird Dog website, and I am on the firmware update page. Ta -da, ta -da, firmware update. And so I'm going to scroll down until I see something that looks like my camera. And there it is, P100.21.0.3766. Don't pay any attention to this note right here. This is just for the P200. And by the way, there's the P200. There's the P400, 4, 4K. There's the P400. So you can see there's a whole family of them. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just click this, and that's going to download. You can see I've already downloaded it here. Download the um, the zip file and we'll drag that in so you can see here's the zip file and I've actually unzipped it and it, <laughs> it it populated this one right here so let's go in and take a look at that and you see we've got two offerings here one for Mac and one for Windows PCs we'll double click that one and we can see aha now here's our step one step two step three but more important than that at least for the moment are our upgrade instructions. This is an important piece of information that will bring in a PDF file. And we'll just drag this over here for a second. A PDF file that says, aha, the firmware update procedure, the baseboard, the MCU, and the NDI firmware. Uh, we've already talked about that. And so then it talks about things you'll need and then the update process. Um, one of the things that you will need will be this USB 3 cable, you know, the old printer, printer style. You'll also need a thumb drive and find the oldest thumb drive that you've got on your shelf because apparently the older ones work better than the, than the newer ones. And then, of course, you want to be connected to your network. So let's go back over to our PDF file for a second. We're just going to scroll through. Uh, until we get, yeah, here's the, the explanation that I just read you on the baseboard and the MCU and the NDI firmware, what they do. So, and here is the, the we need the update zip file, we need the camera, we need the USB cable, um, we need the uh, a Windows PC, which we're working on right now, and then a memory stick uh, formatted as a FAT32. And there, here's a note about the memory sticks that just basically says, get an old one. All right, so let's skip over to that. 
and we'll come down here and we will find the baseboard update. Okay, this is the first part of this process. Um, on a Windows PC, download and undate and unzip the updated file link above. In, inside, you will find three subfolders. Um, and let's see if we can find our subfolders right here. Yep. So navigate to the step one folder. So we'll navigate to the step one folder. There it is right there. There's our step one folder. I'm going to drag it just off the edge so it'll, it'll hang around when I make this one go on the top. Connect your Windows PC to the peak. 100 camera using um, labeled 3.0 using USB A and uh, to the USB. Okay, USB cable. Great. So it's important to know in this, and let me move the, the control out of the way for a second, that there are actually two USB. Are they two? Yeah, there are two USB ports here port one and port two. Well, obviously we need port two because that's all that this guy's going to plug into. So we're just going to reach around and plug him in like thus. And then we'll come back to our directions. And it says double click the application called load FW USB mass storage dash V2.1.1.xe. dot one dot one dot X E. Okay. Well, there is load FW USB mass storage dash v2.1.1. You know, it's not a bad idea to, to read this stuff carefully and maybe even, uh, you know, go back and double check yourself. Um, so we're going to do that. And it shows a little window down here that sh is going to pop up. So let's see if we do that, if it pops up this application. There it does. It's Windows protected your PC. Hooray. Microsoft Defender prevented you from doing something you wanted to do. Click more info and run anyway. Okay, so we're going to run it anyway. And there is our little window right there. So we're going to pull that off to the side. And boy, we just lost it all together. So let's scroll up our directions and put our window back on. And it says important if you encounter an error, well, if you encounter an error, pay attention to that and see what they're saying. Um, and here are some ways to, to, to go through that process. Once the application is loaded, please select UVC CAM from the device list. Well, here's the device list. And UVC CAM was the number one thing that was already selected. Okay. Click the firmware button and browse to the step one folder. All right. Firmware. Browse. Uh, let's see. Let's go back a couple of versions here. Step one folder. Okay. There's a step one folder to find the bin file, p100-core-102.bin. That's the bin file. So we'll do that and we will open it. And there it is right there. And this is version 9.1 and gives us the time. So let's scroll down a little bit more. And then we'll bring the app back up. And then it says, click update and wait for the happy OK button. And what is it giving us here? Hmm. It's open. Oh, it's opening a folder on the USB drive E. That's interesting. That's not mentioned here in this process. It does say this power, this process can take up to five minutes and at times may appear to stall, especially at 94%. Please be patient and never remove power from the unit in this process. So we're waiting for something that looks like this with this OK on it. But we ended up getting a folder that popped up. Was that the folder? Nope, must have been the other one. Let's try that other one. Yeah, here it is. This folder popped up as if we should select something. Now, it doesn't have a select button on it. So... We might mention this to bird dog because this could confuse idiots like me into thinking that I'm supposed to do something, but I'm just going to minimize that window and I'll minimize this window for the minute, for the moment. We're up to 87, 88%, 89%. This is great. 
Meanwhile, the camera is sitting there, blinking, waiting, receiving its update. We are back at the magic 94% right there. This is interesting. When we do a screen capture, my cursor is like giant size in real life, but when it's on the desktop capture part, it's not. That's interesting. Okay, we're stuck on 94% for a moment, so we're going to come back to that at, at 94%. And once we have done that, we will have updated the baseboard so that we will have completed the first step in the process. Now, in just a minute, um, yeah, current, let me go back to the picture of the camera and make sure we're still at 94%, by the way. And so we've got two cables connected. We've got the USB cable and we had already connected the ethernet cable. Now in, in my case, the ethernet is PoE, is power over ethernet. So if, if you don't have PoE and you're running it through a regular switch, then you'll want to, of course, <laughs> the camera won't work unless you plug in power. So I guess it's not as brilliant a, a thought as I thought. Um, so you've got to have power to the camera some way, but in just a minute, you will need to power the camera um, with that, um, with that uh, shore power, with the DC uh, power connector, uh, which I happen to have just off camera right here. Um, we'll need to power it with that and then actually unplug that as part of the process. So we've got that handy in case we need it. Um, and we've got our USB drive and I'll show you what we put on that um, just to kind of keep you in the loop. Uh, we're now up to 95%, so we're rocking along here. 96, looks like we're coming close to the end of this process. 97. Yep, it's like watching paint dry or grass grow, as they say. I was doing something the other day, and Sandy said, you know, what you're doing is like watching grass grow. All right, we're at 99%, and there's our OK. That, that one looks like that one, so we're going to click OK, and then away we go. It says, the process is now complete. Please proceed to the next step. So I think that means that we can take this off. So we'll X out of that one. And we will go to uh, step two, the MCU update. Now the M MCU update, it requires the USB stick. So on our Windows PC, navigate to the step two folder. So we'll go back to our folders here and come back to step two. And the only thing in it is this file hd20.bin, hd20bin. Now, I'm going to go to a, just a bit of criticism of the bird dog folks for a second in terms of firmware updates. As somebody that I've, you know, my current bird, bird dog gear and this is gear that I'm, I'm selling, I'm not using necessarily, uh, consists of P200 camera, the P100 camera, the keyboard, uh, the flex in, the flex out, and the flex backpack. So that's six different bird dog devices that we have here in our studio and available for sale. Each one of those, when you do an update, updates with a file called hd20.bin. So if you're updating multiple devices, the protocol that, that I've used here is to say, I don't care what's on my thumb drive and what I think is on my thumb drive or what I know is on my thumb drive. I'm erasing that and I'm going back and getting the file at the time I need it so that I've always got the right, um, the right master control unit update in this case. Um, I think for the, um, the P200 and the keyboard, it's actually part of the baseboard. Um, but it would be nice if the files were identified uh, what the device was just so, just so you don't screw up. Just so you don't screw up. Okay, so I've taken this uh, hd20.bin file that was in the downloads in the firmware pack in step two, and I have placed it on this thumb drive that happens to match my shirt. And so we, we, are, we are ready with that part. Um, so I've, um, it says, follow this video to format the USB stick. Well, we've already done that. We already know it works. Insert your USB stick format as a FAT32 into your Windows PC. Um, da -da -da -da. Copy the file, right-click the USB and eject 
remove the USB stick from your PC and insert it into the P100 camera's USB port. Well, this is the USB port that's marked audio. <laughs> so if you're looking for, if you're looking for, sorry, there, that's what, what I was reading. If you're looking for a USB port, it's this guy right here that's illustrated in green and it's right below the um, RS-232 slash RS-422 RJ-45 jack, not the NDI jack where your PoE um, would be plugged in. All right, so let's look at our printer, excuse me, look at our camera here. And we've got Ethernet already plugged in here. This is the RJ-45 for the RS-232 and RS-422. This is our thumb drive, and that is the USB port. Um, they don't happen to mention it, but I think we're going to go ahead and unplug this guy right here. And do they say, let's go back and look at the directions here and see if they say to reboot the camera at this point. It says, the process is now complete. Please proceed to the next step. Um, okay, so it doesn't mention unplugging the USB, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and do that. Um, so remove the USB stick from your PC and insert it into the P100's USB port. Uh, let's do that. And since this is deadly boring as it is, I'm going to let you see what I'm doing. And we're going to plug that right in there. Pow, there it is. It is plugged in. Let's go back to our direct directions. And it says, ensure the P100 camera is powered by the included AC-DC power adapter, not PoE power over Ethernet. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug that in. And we'll see if we can do it in such a way that it doesn't get in the way of the camera. And by the way, if you're wondering, the camera will prioritize its power source. So it will prioritize the DC cord over the PoE. I don't know if it just made a switch over now, um, but if I were to unplug the, uh, the Ethernet, which carries PoE, it would be on the DC. If I unplug the DC, of course, it would be on the PoE. So in this case, let's go back and see what they want us to do next. It says remove all power from the P100 and wait 10 seconds and then repower the device with only the AC-DC adapter and the USB stick attached. Okay, so we want to be careful here that we don't leave the PoE in or that we don't use the, the Ethernet, the PoE Ethernet, to, uh, to power this after. So let's, let's see if we can do all this without being problematic. Now, one thing I will notice too, that it's a little difficult if you've got fat fingers to get your finger in there to disconnect that switch, but it can be done. And then of course the DC just unplugs very simply. And so we'll count a slow count of 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. We're letting all the capacitors discharge inside the camera. 1,006. 1007, 1008, we're still leaving our USB in, we haven't pulled it out, 1009, 1010. So we'll go ahead and, and connect DC power only at this point. And then the camera will go through its power on sequence. You can see the little power light came on there. It's bowing. And then it's going to uh, check its servo motors and make sure they're all working. Meanwhile, while it's doing this, that there's no flash there's nothing to, that would flash on this particular USB stick, but meanwhile, this is loading the, um, the HD20.bin file into the, the unit right there. It's, and let's go back to our directions. Once the camera has finished its boot up exercise, pan full left and then back to the center. Well, the camera was already panned full left. Please remove the power one more time, spelled the Australian way, apparently T-O-M-E, and reconnect all the usual cameras to the camera. All right, so we're gonna disconnect. We're gonna disconnect power right here. And it doesn't tell us again, I don't think. Let's let's uh, scroll down and see. Yep, it doesn't tell us, but, but we need to go ahead and, and disconnect the USB at this point as well. So we have nothing connected on the camera and we're here at the end of step two. And the very last instruction on step two is 
Once the camera has finished its boot up exercise, please remove power one more time, which we've done, and reconnect all the usual cables to the camera. So we have, we have gone the next step further by taking the USB stick out. So let's connect. We're not going to connect shore power unless we need to. And that's just what I call DC. And so let's go ahead and just connect our RJ45 Ethernet, which is PoE. And the camera will go through its boot up sequence again. This time you get to see it pan all the way to the left, bow, and then come all the way back to the right. Um, or maybe it's already done its bow. Here we come to the left. We can hear a click inside that the lens was resetting its position. There's a little bow. And then we are back to back to our official position, our, our start position. All right. So now we've got one more piece of firmware to update here. And this is involves the web interface. So please navigate to the web interface. All right. Let's go to the web interface and make sure we're there. And that would be right here. We'll probably have to re log in again because it rebooted the, the password. This is a secret. So don't listen as I type in B I R D D O G and click. Okay. That's the password for every bird dog device, at least until you change it. And now we are in the, dashboard where we were just a second ago, you can see our firmware version has not changed because we haven't updated the NDI firmware yet. And really there's nothing else that we can note that has changed. Although I'll show you a trick to, to double check the uh, baseboard here in just a second. All right. So we've navigated as, as they asked us to, to that web interface. And it says by default, the P100 is set to DHCP mode. Well, we've already gone by that. Um, log in the password. Well, there it is. The password's bird dog. So it's not a secret. Navigate to the system menu and select system update. So let's go to the system menu. We've got the network menu, the PTZ menu, and then the system menu. And we want to navigate to system update. So here's system update. And then we'll come back to our directions. When the pop-up dialog box opens to allow you to select a file, navigate to the step three folder and select the .fw file that is located within it. Select this file and press update. So let's do that. So we will choose file and we will navigate to, let's see, it's downloads, P100 firmware pack, Step three, it's the only file in, in step three folder, bird dog underscore P100 underscore 21.01.3766.fw. That's the firmware we want. So we'll say open and then update. And as it updates, it's going to give us a little kind of a, a running, um, commentary on what it's doing, processing update package, extracting, changing directory, checking if update script exists in the package, running in package update script, checking bird dog firmware update version, firmware update detected is bird dog dot 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 3766, checking bird dog hardware version, detected hardware is bird dog P100 firmware matches hardware proceeding, stopping bird dog services, installing required packages, copying new bird dog data, setting default system target, syncing file systems. Congratu well, it's finished before I finished reading it. Congratulations, your firmware is now updated and your device is rebooting. After the reboot, you can simply refresh this browser window and log, log back in. Well, let's do that. We're going to refresh the browser window. And... <clears throat> Come on, camera. This is the hint. We're refreshing the browser window. Refreshing the browser window. Well, I'm not going to be patient. Let's just do another one. 192.168.1.137. Let's see if we can get in. Maybe it's still updating. 
That's generally what happens in these situations. Now there's no indication at the camera. The camera does not do a reset at this point. Um, so you don't really have an indication on the camera what has happened. You, we can see though that we've reached uh, kind of an impasse that the, uh, the camera's URL doesn't work. Let's just double check and make sure that the camera's URL hasn't changed. Uh, we'll bring in our command prompt because remember it is DHCP. So let's see, uh, ARP space slash A. And we can see the camera is not on the list. The 137 is not on the list. And there are, new, uh, there are no new IP addresses on the list. So let's check Bonjour Browser here and see if Bonjour Browser can give us any other information. We'll rephrase that. We've got our main camera dot 88 and no other cameras. So you say, okay, Tom, <laughs> what's going on? We'll try to refresh this one more time. And perhaps we haven't given it enough time or maybe we need to uh, actually go in and, and do a hard reboot. Um, so here we go. Let's say after the process reports is complete, please allow two minutes for the P100 to, re to reboot and then refresh your browser. So maybe, uh, maybe we haven't given it the two minutes that it needed quite yet. Let's try to refresh the browser again and see and it looks like it didn't like that well no it's still going here meanwhile we'll bring up the command prompt and try that one again it's nice to have different ways to check these things in case one is working one isn't okay we still don't see it on that list and we can run that command again by simply hitting the right the right cursor key and it just fills in the information so we can keep doing this ad, no ad nauseum until we, uh, until we see that it's come. And we can give it just another minute or so to make sure. And what, what we'll do if, if none of that works is we'll simply disconnect, give it again about, um, about 10 seconds, and then plug back in. And that's been uh, pretty successful for me in the past. Okay. So, and you know, with Streaming Idiots, one of the things that, that we do is we don't do things the way that you would normally do it on a show like this. You know, I haven't gone through and double checked this process on this camera to make sure that this all worked. I'm doing it for the very first time. So you're experiencing uh, with me now, what you would experience if, if you were doing it by yourself, I'm assuming, unless I've missed a step somewhere along the way. Um, don't think that I have. Um, and I have, uh, let's do our, our ARP-A again and see if it changes. Nope, didn't change, still not on the list. We can try Bonjour Browser again just to be sure. And Bonjour Browser is, is a free download. And we'll do it a couple of times. It's a little quirky. It doesn't always report right away. But in this case, it's not reporting anything. So, and it's still, it's still trying to connect here. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and be bold and disconnect the camera and count to 10 and then reconnect. So here we go. So we're gonna disconnect and work my finger up underneath there. There we go. So 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010. And we'll plug back in. And we'll watch for the camera to do its little reset dance. Um, it's going to, to bow and then spin and then bow and then spin back, or I guess that would be pan. So bow, pan, bow, pan. 
So there's the, the pan, the first pan, and then now the bow. You can see the lens reset. There's the bow. And then we'll spin back to the, to the front. And then we can come back to our web page here and see if we can get it to, to update again. And there we go. Okay. So we can log back in. B-I-R-D-D-O-G. And we can now see that we have the version 21.01.3766 firmware installed. Hooray! Hooray! Um, you notice that it, it changed it. It, it's probably changed back to factory settings on a lot of this. So if we want to go back in and set a, uh, a longer DHCP uh, timeout, for example, maybe 30 seconds instead of 20 seconds, sometimes the system doesn't always get recognized on the network when it first fires up. And so it might not get a, uh, an, an address from your switch or router. And so it'll fall back to that switch, to, to that address right there. So. I like a little extra, little extra time there. On the PTZ settings, uh, we're going to try the on-screen display. That's the OSD in just a second. Um, the system files, we were just there. And then these are all the different setup files for the white balance, the exposure, the picture. Um, and then the new one is the, the color matrix, uh, which we can see is now reset to all sorts of crazy things. The um, kind of the mid-range seems to be the, the sure should be the default setting right there uh, has been with everything else so far uh, so we'll take just a second and run those back to to mid ranges it does it is nice because it does allow you to to take a particular color that's in the camera or in the image of the camera and highlight that color um, so if you've got somebody wearing a red dress and it doesn't really pop you can go ahead and just pull the reds up pretty quickly um, the other thing that I would do here is, is probably bring the sharpness down, the noise reduction all the way up, um, saturation, hue, contrast, take the gamma all the way down, uh, leave the white balance. Well, the white balance is set for indoor, so I probably would start out with auto and see how it was going. And then I would do full auto on the exposure. And so that would be my initial setup. Uh, the, currently, the NDI bandwidth is set for 120. Um, that's okay. I do want to change this camera back to what we're, what we're using in our system right here, which is 1080p 5994. And I'm going to apply that. And so now if we go back to the dashboard, um, no, we don't see a change there. Let's just refresh and see. No, we still don't see that. So let's go back to the PTZ. Okay, well, it is set for that. So let's just go into vMix and see if we can pull that camera in. So we're going to pull our vMix into vMix where we can see it. And we're going to add input, NDI. Now we're looking for not one P100, but two. And here is our first one. Here are all the other NDI inputs that I'm using in vMix. And then this is a cam. So we're going to select it, even though it has a blank image. And it'll come into vMix. And it says, oh, that looks like a blank camera. Let's, let's make it go there. But I think it may be just because it's facing a dark part of the room. So we're going to enable the PTZ, which is Sony Visca over IP. And it's, its address is 192.168.1.37. We will connect it. And let's see if we can go all the way around. It's a little slow on the, the speed. Can we adjust that? There we go. There we go. And then a little less zoom. And then maybe a little more pan tilt. There we go. So now we can see there's the image. The blue looks pretty good. So we might uh, we might do some more with that. 
or we might not. So now we have the camera as part of our production. We can take it there. So now everybody can see the camera as part of our production. And we are done. We are done. Um, at least I think we're done. Let's go back and check our bird dog directions for just a second. Um, there might be some other setup that we have to do to get the camera where we want to. Um, so here it says, after the process, uh, after the process reports as complete, which it did, please allow two minutes. We allowed longer than that. And then we had to actually reboot the camera ourselves. And it says the update process is now complete. So there are a couple of little differences in reality between the, the bird dog process that they've published in this document that comes with the firmware and actuality. Not big deals, but for somebody that's doing it that's not familiar with these kind of processes and doesn't know what to do next and doesn't want to, you know, do I unplug that, that cable? You know, maybe if we'd le left the DC power connected or had plugged the DC power back in at the very end, maybe that would have given us a different result. But um, that was the result we had here today. And, and we'll, we, we'll make mention of that to BirdDog so that they're aware of these minor discrepancies in the uh, minor discrepancies in the documentation versus what at least this idiot has found to be real. Um, this has taken far longer than I anticipated. Um, but I wanted to make sure that uh, we went through it kind of head to toe so that everybody that was interested could have a chance to, um, to catch it and see what we were all about with the bird dog P100. Now, um, oh, looks like my URL stayed up this time. You can go to the store here, easternshorebroadcasting.com. And, um, and purchase a P100. We have them in stock. I think we just have the black ones in stock, but the white ones are easily available through the warehouse. Um, the P200s that we've reviewed before, we have those available in white and black. And then the PTZ keyboards uh, we have available too. I think probably not next week, but at some point, and we may not do it as part of one of these shows, but we'll do a video on how to update the firmware on the PTZ keyboard. And then maybe one on the... Uh, the Flex uh, 4K in encoder. Um, so those are going to be real popular. $400 for an HDMI encoder. So for those of you that are doing sports, um, you know, think, you know, all we have to do is run out some, um, some Ethernet cable to a remote camera and connect it to the bird dog Flex in, which is an NDI encoder. And that NDI encoder, if it's POE, which it, of course it should be, uh, will then power your camera as well. So you can run one cable out to the camera um, and that's going to power the camera and the encoder and it's common ethernet cable. So it's no kind of specialty cable. You can practically buy these at Walmart, plug it into a, a network switch, POE switch, POE plus, I think is what's required. And, and you've, you've powered your camera. You've got video from your camera, good high definition NDI video. Oh yeah. And as a bonus, you've got comms. Uh, there's a, there's a comm jack, a headphone jack on the, um, on, on the flex encoder, the flex in, uh, that will set up two-way communication between that and the base station, which in this case would be the vMix, vMix PC. So uh, some good stuff happening in the bird dog world. We're, we're proud to report it and pleased to be associated with them. We're going to cut over to the post show now, now that we've done all the heavy lifting and, uh, and have a lemonade. So if you're just watching the show part, thanks for watching. If, uh, if you want to hang around and watch the post show, well, we will have, we will have the post show in its entirety, both live and on demand, not like some, some lesser broadcasts that may have occurred in the last 24 hours. <laughs> Be right back.
One second here. Okay, there we go. Post show, post show. Where is the post show? Here is the post show. There we go. That's the post show. So for those of you that have hung around to the very end, we, we really appreciate that. Um, we did notice, didn't want to let this get by, but um, apparently uh, Martin Sinclair, the developer of vMix, Martin Sinclair, has uh, has taken on a different look. He He's mostly kind of a shorts... Um, shorts and tennis shoes, t-shirt kind of guy. You know, he does a lot of, a lot of riding bike, bikes mostly. Um, and, and he's really gone for a different look. So it's, it's the, you know, even when he's eating his, his cereal in the morning, um, he's got a different look going on. If you happen to miss it last night, the VMix Fun Time live show uh, is available on YouTube. It's had 1400 views in 18 hours. So it's probably doing okay. You know, it's just, just the way it is. Um, big shout out to to our friends, uh, Dave in the in the excuse me, Ron who's local, and and Dave in the in the Northwest, um, to Ken in Northern California, and uh, Tim Trotman, who is just down the road from us in the Mariana, Florida area. We can he can almost see us from here. So it's been it's been great to be with you guys today and go through this. I know it's a little tedious, um, especially if um, if you um, don't have a bird dog P100, but um, you may find yourself in a position of, of having to help somebody else with it. Um, so so there you go. Um, let's see. Wrong year in the title says Steedy Cam. Let's take a look again and see. That indeed it is the the wrong year in the title. The VMix Fun Time Live Show, January 2020. The thumbnail was apparently adopted from last year, or else they're having trouble adjusting to the new year. I think on the show last night, Tim was lamenting about uh, how horrible 2020 was, and and yet he just can't get away from it. It it follows him from 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 year to year, from generation to generation. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll make a note to us uh, to get them to update that or maybe they've done it on purpose. You know, those those vMix guys, you just never know what they're up to next. They did talk a little bit last night about uh, vMix 24 and when it might be coming out. Um, the strong hint was that it was going to come out between now and the next vMix Fun Time live show in February. They didn't really say that, but that's what I gleaned from it. I have guessed, I think, either February 2nd or February 4th um, as the release date. And you got to give me at least a, a day's leeway either way because Australia versus U.S., you know, they could release it on Tuesday, but we wouldn't get it. Uh, or they, No, they could release it on Wednesday, but we would get it on Tuesday because we were still a day before. So yeah. I thought about doing a betting, betting pool on this one, but... Um, it just would be fraught with too many exceptions to the to the pool rule as to uh, what day it was actually released. Would it be the day that you received it or the day that they released it or, or you know, how would you know? But that is uh, that is all I've got on that subject for the moment. So we'll see. We will see. So um, if you missed it earlier and you're still hanging around, the VMAX uh, 101 class, the the, uh, the beginner's class for vMix, uh, started yesterday, but we're having a second first session. We're repeating the first session again tomorrow, so if you'd like to join the class, you won't have missed anything. You can go to the website, easternshorebroadcasting.com, and, um, and go to the store and find it in the classes section there. If you are a new user to vMix, highly recommended. If you're an intermediate user to vMix, you'll get a lot out of the class. Um, obviously, you know a lot already, but vMix is like an onion and you keep pulling away the layers and there's more underneath. And so we'll be peeling back those layers. Uh, we'll go pretty deep in some subjects and not quite so deep in, in other subjects, but it'll be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And it's a good class. We've got about 25 folks in there. And we do it online with Zoom, so we, we send out a Zoom link. Same link every week, so 
people can join and, and have it as part of their history. So it's easy to, to get in and out of. And we had some great questions yesterday. Um, you know, some were kind of beginner classes, some were uh, more advanced questions, and some were absolutely very, very high questions. Um, and as, as Martin um, Steedicam says, they are, there are definitely lots of ways to do the same thing. And, and you'll find a way that suits your taste, that suits your intuition. That is, you know, should it work this way if you do this? Um, and if it does, then say, stay with it. But there might be other ways to do the same thing. And then sometimes those other ways are better or shorter or faster or use less resources. So there's, there's, it's, it's fun to have a Lego set like that that you can do different things with um, and experiment and play with, get your workflow kind of dialed in. People call all the time. In fact, I've got a meeting in the morning with somebody that's got some questions on their workflow. And, and each workflow, even the simple ones, can be unique because there's certain things about it that you, you are thinking that you want to do that other people might not have done it the very same way um, just because that's not the way their mind works. And that's the beauty of vMix is that it can, it can work. You can set it up to work the way your mind works if you want to. If you're a visual person and you want to use it on a touchscreen monitor and, and touch inputs to make them go live, you can do that. If you would rather use a mouse and work on a, in a mouse environment, you can do that. If you would rather have a, a keyboard like the good old X keys 80 that I use for my production here, and you can just mash a key on the keyboard that's dedicated for something so that you don't have to fool with a mouse the whole time, then, then there's a way to do that. And there are numerous other control surfaces and our friend Joe DeMax from England has come up with a, um, something he calls central control that will allow us to repurpose other control systems, like even the, the big uh, Cadillac TriCaster control systems, um, and repurpose those to be used for vMix. So how cool is that? So a uh, very, very cool world that we're living in, in the live streaming time. I think the pandemic has had an effect of speeding up the maturity and the growth in some areas. Um, in other areas, I think it's frozen that growth. For example, vMix 24 has been delayed by the pandemic because the vMix guys are just, you know, what did they say? They had 30 or 40,000 emails last year in 2020. Um, and just to respond, I mean, I can't imagine responding to all of those emails. Each one is a customer or a potential customer that has a question that they need to get answered. They need some help. They need to figure out what's going on. And so sometimes, especially with the more complicated ones, it can take a little while to figure out exactly what's going on in order to give folks the right answer. And sometimes it's not even vMix related. Um, you know, Blackmagic with the DeckLink Duo 2 and the DeckLink Quad 2, um, if they do a factory reset, it resets the connectors back to, uh, to physical connector number one is now set up for input and output. And you have to remap that connector so that connector number five, I guess, um, would be now an input and not just dead. So anyway, those aren't vMix things, but there's the kind of questions that people ask, you know, why is this not working in vMix anymore? Well, it's because another piece of your hardware has, uh, has stopped doing its thing. So there they go. Let's see what Oz by drone has to say. Get those people to support Mac with the M1 chick. Mac users won't ever be able to use bootcamp anymore. Wirecast needs a competitor. Well, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. Um, I, uh, I think I've asked that question 42 times. Uh, when will vMix be available on Mac? And uh, I mean, in, in the Mac environment. And the answer has always been a definitive never. So if you want vMix, you're going to have to switch over to the PC world. I mean, there are just so many more things that you can do with a PC when it comes to live streaming and broadcasting than you can do with a Mac. That's the reality of it. And that's why so many major corporations, um, universities, schools, uh, churches, um, individual um, AV vendors, and production houses uh, are switching to 
PCs so that they can use vMix. Um, just, you know, that's, that's part of the price in making the switch um, is, is learning the Windows environment. And, uh, and it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. Yep. And here's some wisdom from, from Steedicam that uh, it has been a time of challenge, especially when you think about the school systems. Um, my daughter-in-law is, is a teacher and, and she, you know, talked about the challenges that they faced in trying to keep the kids on track with their learning. Um, and then, you know, re remotely or a mix of, you know, kind of a hybrid of, of kids on site as well as kids remote. Um, and then, you know, there are other places like the city of Chicago teachers that just, you know, they, I, who knows where their brain is. Um, but they just say, we're not coming to work, you know, ever, I guess. Um, they're not on strike. They're just not going to work in the schools. And so everything there is remote. Um, I can't imagine anything more horrible for, for parents than to have your, you know, 10, 12, 14 year old hold up in your house now seven days a week, <laughs> 24 hours a day, um, because they can't go to school. Um, gee whiz, it's going to be a real setback for a lot of those kids. And, and, you know, probably a good portion of Chicago kids don't need any more setbacks. Anyway, I, I didn't mean to opine on that. Let's, um, Let's call an end to this version of Streaming Idiots. Thanks so much for hanging in there to the end. If you haven't already, we'd love to you to, uh, to be a friend of ours on uh, the Streaming Idiots page or excuse me, Streaming Idiots group on Facebook. It's, uh, it's facebook.com slash groups slash Streaming Idiots. Uh, or you can just do a search in there and we'd love to have you come join our group. There's a conversation going on pretty much 24-7 about live streaming from folks all over the world. We'd love to have you be part of that. And you can also um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd love to have you that and go ahead and click the bell so you get notifications of when we're live. Because sometimes we do live stuff that's not Wednesday afternoons at three o'clock Eastern. Anyway, we'll see you next Wednesday afternoon at three o'clock Eastern. Thanks for tuning in. And let's see if we can't send you out with uh, a little appropriateness. Yeah, here it is. Very good. Take care.